You've probably heard lots of good things said about tubeless tyres, including better puncture protection, comfort, lower rolling resistance and so on, but have you heard about the downsides? The tyres can be a pain to fit, sealant makes a mess everywhere, and there are some huge compatibility issues. Tubeless might just be the best thing since the invention of the pneumatic tyre, or it might be a complete waste of time. The history of bicycle product development is littered with as many rubbish products as significant ones. In our view, it's a big step forward. You may beg to differ, but as the technology stands today, tubeless is not without its drawbacks. Some of them are pretty well known, others less so. Here then are some of the cons with current tubeless tyre technology. What's your experience with tubeless tyres? Ridden them and loved them or seen some disasters and wouldn't touch them with a barge pole? Let us know down in the comments below. Oh, and if you like these videos, then click like, subscribe as it really helps the channel grow and you can get notified when we upload a new video by clicking on the bell icon. The main feature of a tubeless system is the protection against punctures, but sealant has its limits. The sealant won't seal all holes above a certain size, generally about six millimeters, because it's simply overwhelmed by the speed of the air rushing out of the hole. So you might in rare cases find yourself with a flat tire and sealant everywhere messy. For really big holes that sealant can't fix, you have two choices, either whack a tube in or use a tubeless repair kit involving an odd rubber plug which you stuff into the hole to seal the tyre. They're popular with mountain bikers and gravel riders but yet to be embraced by roadies. Yup, it's advisable to still carry a spare inner tube, even though you've banished them from your wheels, just in the rare event that the sealant can't plug a hole. Vittoria has recently come up with tubeless liners for road setups. They claim that this is essentially a run-flat system for bikes, and we've been testing the system ourselves. Liam has taken a closer look, and you can find a link to his video review popping up now. This is the biggest problem with current tubeless tyres. Fitting a regular clincher tyre and inner tube is mostly painless. At worst, you might need a few tyre levers, but after that, a small pump will get the tyre inflated onto the rim. It takes about five minutes, all in all. Some tubeless tyres, however, can take much, much more time to get fitted to the rims and involve much more cursing. The problem is due to there being no one standard that all women tyre manufacturers adhere to. And because you need a very good seal with the tyre bead on the rim, it generally involves involves a very tight fit, in some cases so tight that you might need multiple tyre levers to get it back on. We've known people to give up, it's simply that difficult. When you've got the tyre onto the rim, it's not all over, nope, in some cases you need a tubeless specific pump, CO2 gas canister or compressor to deliver the big burst of air needed to pop the tyre up onto the beads. Much of the problem with tricky tubeless installation comes down to the issue of compatibility between different brand rim and tyres and a lack of a universal standard. The issue is the wide variation in the rim and tyre size and the bead stiffness, which not only affects installation, but also safety. Keeping the tolerances small is crucial to the success of the system because without an inner tube pushing the tyre bead against the inside of the rim, there needs to be a really good fit to ensure the tyre doesn't blow off the rim. And the result is the current situation that sees some tyres being a breeze to fit uh, to some rims and the complete opposite being the case with another combination of tyre and rim brand. This is slowly changing though with more brands are making their tubeless tyres to ETRTO standards and we have to say that the same issues can affect tubed clinches. That said the issue seems to be magnified with tubeless. You do need to be a little careful if you're upgrading to a new wheel set when going tubeless, as there is a difference between a tubeless ready rim and one that is designed for tubeless only tyres. This can be found at the rim bed and specifically where the tyre bead sits. Hookless rims are designed for tubeless tyres only, though you can still use them with an inner tube and they, as the name suggests, do not feature a hook on the rim. Instead, they're designed to be used specifically with tubeless tyres. Tubeless ready rims, meanwhile, offer you a wider selection of tyres as you can use standard clincher wheels and tubeless ready tyres. A tubeless ready rim keeps the hooks that you'd expect to find and they don't come with the lower max tyre pressures of hookless rims either. Which one is better? That's not a debate that we'll get into today, maybe later. 
all that sealant invites the risk of a big mess and sometimes tubeless can be a very messy thing indeed. If you get a puncture while riding, unless you have mug guards, you're going to get a spray of sealant all over your frame, bum and back of anyone riding behind you. When a tubeless installation goes wrong, you can be left with puddles of sealant on the floor or ground of your workshop, kitchen, office, absolutely everywhere and have fun explaining why there's white gunk everywhere to your other half. The extra material needed to make a tubeless tyre, and in some cases the rim as well with additional rim strips, plus the tubeless valves and necessary sealant, means that even though you're ditching the inner tube, a tubeless setup can be heavier. The tyres are generally heavier too. A Continental GP5000 TL 28mm tyre weighs 340 grams versus 250 grams for the regular version. Removing the inner tube, however, does save you in the region of 100 grams, but you're adding back 50 to 60 grams of sealant which negates some of the weight saved and those tubeless valves are probably a little heavier too and there's the rim strip if your wheels need it so don't go expecting tubeless to shed loads of weight from your bike but in some cases it can save a small amount Wheel manufacturers have been quick to embrace tubeless and a lot of new road and gravel bikes are now being sold with wheels that are tubeless ready, so you're halfway there. If you want to go tubeless, you're going to have to buy new tyres. Now, unless you need to replace worn out tyres, then it does mean replacing a perfectly good set of tyres with new tubeless tyres. Tubeless tyres are a little bit more expensive than the clincher model and you'll also need to get yourself tubeless valves, sealant and rim strips if the rim bed isn't sealed. Sealant eventually dries out and needs topping up or replacing. Sealant is the magic ingredient that gives tubeless setups their big advantages over inner tubes in being able to seal punctures. The liquid sealant required of a tubeless setup doesn't stay liquid forever, it'll eventually dry out. I've had many alarming cases with road and mountain bikes when I've whipped the tyre off only to find the sealant completely dried out. Muckoff claims its sealant lasts up to six months, after which you're going to need to top it up. In most cases, the sealant is going to dry out long before your tyre wears out. Now you can either carry out checks every few months by popping the tyre off the rim, or the easiest option is just to top up the sealant every few months. When you do need to add sealant, there isn't really a foolproof way to do it. Yes, you can remove the core of most tubeless valves, but over time they love to get themselves gunked up with old sealant and that can make removing the core a nightmare. Then once you manage to get it out, most sealant bottles don't fit the valve properly, so you'll inevitably get some sealant dripping down onto the rim, tyre sidewall, and in the worst cases, down onto the carpet. Our Liam is terrible for this. Now there are specific syringes available for this job, but even those are to throwing sealant everywhere. This all means that you probably want to have a rag at the ready. Is there anything that you wish you'd known before you went tubeless? Have any horror stories stopped you from ditching your inner tubes? Or tell us about them in the comments below. Well, thanks once again for watching. Give us a like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.